Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be discussing the Los Angeles Valiant versus the Dallas Fuel. It was an epic game. It was exciting. It delivered. And guess what? My prediction was pretty much spot on. Now, I don't want to rub it in your guys' faces. Please, don't, don't think I want to rub it in your faces. Don't think I'm happy that Dallas Fuel lost. Yes, I am slightly joyful that my prediction was correct. And you guys can see now from my perspective that some of the things I was seeing are actually true, you know? Dallas, yes, they were a really good team with Envious, but they brought in these new players. They're looking a little off. They got some things to figure out. I'll get more in detail about it later in this video. But yeah, first and foremost, I just want to make sure you guys understand. I don't want to rub it into any faces. I'm not happy that they lost. I just want to see great Overwatch. Again, the game's delivered. It was great Overwatch, which I'm hyped about regardless. And just be sure, guys, before we kick this video off, drop a like on this video. Every like counts. And subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out daily content. I'm working my butt off. I'm glad you guys love my content. And boom, let's go. So starting off the day, we did get to see Los Angeles Valiant taking on the Dallas Fuel. It was a good game. It went 3-0 on the favor of Los Angeles Valiant, which kind of looks lopsided. There was kind of a few different stories in this game. It started off pretty close, but as the series went on, it progressively turned into the favor of Los Angeles Valiant. And by the end of the last map, they were completely stomping them. Again, we're going to get more into this one later. Let's move on to the second match of the day where we had Boston Uprising taking on Florida Mayhem. Now, heading into this match, I expected it to be a little bit closer. I knew that the Boston Uprising were going to win, but I expected Florida Mayhem to maybe pick up a map, possibly two, especially after their performance against London Spitfire. But ah, once we got into the set, Florida Mayhem looked like the Florida Mayhem from the preseason. They were just not making any plays. Logics didn't look great. Manitin didn't look great at all. He was making a lot of mistakes. To Vic, he just looked average. And they kind of got taken out by Boston pretty easily. I, and dude, Dreamcaster looked great in these games. Dreamcaster was popping off in the end. I was really excited to see that. And then moving on to the last set, we saw San Francisco Shock over Shanghai Dragons. And it was really nice to see the Dragons put up a great fight against San Francisco. It wasn't a stomp at all. The Dragons picked up a map. Most of the maps were completely competitive. And I mean, San Francisco... They're kind of looking like a mess, I'm not going to lie. It seems like they got a, a few issues on a lot of their roles there. A lot of mistakes, and their ult management just looks off. Like, just nobody, in general, nobody on the team seems to be using their ults at the right time. You'll see Baby Bay pop a Dragon Blade and just not really know where to go or what to do with it. And then we see Valks coming out from DAC at just really bad times. And then sometimes this Valk can instantly die. Not many clutch tranks from Sleepy coming in and just really in general, nobody's having big ults. Nobody's making plays with their ults and it's not looking good for them. If they can fix that, they'll look like a much, much stronger team, but they still got the wind over Shanghai. They looked pretty decent and Shanghai looked good as well, which was good to see. And with those three games, it was another successful day in the Overwatch League. It's going very smoothly. The crowd's amazing. The players are doing great. The games are super close. The the analyst desk is on point. The casters, everything is just going great. We even managed to keep 150k plus viewers consistently on the last game of the night with San Francisco versus Shanghai. And that's really nice to see. Everything's going well. I'm super hyped about it. Now let's move into this Los Angeles Valiant and Dallas Fuel set. I want to talk about it more in depth and kind of go over what I think Dallas Fuel's problems are and why Los Angeles Valiant looks so good. Now, <laughs> I just want to put it out there, guys. I did sort of predict that. Now, I don't want to sit here and rub that in any of your guys' faces. I don't want to make it seem like I hate Dallas Fuel or that I'm happy that they lost. But there was a lot of you guys in my comments flaming me, telling me, oh, I'm dumb, I'm stupid. How could I think that Envious is going to win? Oh, I just hate XQC, I hate them. Stuff like that. It's not true, guys. I don't hate them. I felt like this for about a month now, but coming into the regular season, I thought that Los Angeles Valiant just have a higher skill ceiling than Dallas Fuel. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Dallas Fuel. They're great. They have a, an amazing, amazing history in Overwatch. Under Envious, they were just extremely successful. But I mentioned to you guys that bringing in these new players is only going to make them worse. With their original six members, they had a system in place. And the system worked really, really well in Western Overwatch. And then they went out and they picked up new pieces and brought them into the team. They picked up XQC. They picked up Custa. And they got Siegel. Now when they play with these new players, and especially when they sub in like XQC, Siegel, and Custa all at the same time, it's a brand new team. It is completely new. That system that they've had in place in the past is no longer going to work. They need to figure something new out. And I personally believe that yes, Effect is insane. Effect is probably one of the best players in the entire world. 
The things I've been saying over the past week in my prediction videos have now been becoming clear to general public. They just look a weird. The, the Dallas Fuel roster just looks weird, especially when they start subbing in a lot of the new players. Now, this could be for many reasons. I don't know exactly why, but I think we can... But again, it's just fair to say that they look off. They don't look like the Dallas Fuel that once was envious, and they're definitely going to have to figure something out. On the side of Los Angeles Valiant, though, like I said, these guys' skill ceiling is high as hell. They have some really good players on. I mean, guys, this roster is stacked. Envy, probably one of the best divas in the game, soon is playing like a god. This Seriously, soon probably looks like the best Western player right now and one of the best in the entire league, including the Korean. He's not putting in work just on Tracer. Coming into this tournament, I thought he was just going to be a Tracer player. I didn't expect him to be busting out Widowmaker and Bastion and Soldier and putting work in on them, which he is. He really is. And Silk Thread, dude. Wow. Silk Thread is impressing me, dude. This guy's Farah, Tracer, and Genji. Insane. And, and Soldier. This guy can play anything. Silk Thread is really, I think he's a rising star in this league. He's young. This is his first time on the big stage, really. There's nowhere for him to go but up, and he's already up there. So I think Silk Thread's skill ceiling, incredibly high. Envy, looking like one of the best divas in the entire league. His skill ceiling is high as hell. Soon, high skill ceiling. Fate, looks like a beast. Unco, we all, like, agilities, crit, like, the roster is stacked, dude. LA Valiant is sick. These guys are a playoff contender, potential championship contender. I can't wait to see them go against teams like London Spitfire, Philadelphia Fusion, and Seoul Dynasty. See how they compare against New York Excelsior. Then we could really rate them. But coming into this week, I just felt like LA Valiant outclassed the Dallas Fuel. And I mean, the series was close. The first two maps, don't get me wrong. First two maps, dude. That first map, Junkertown, oh my god. Guys, that map lasted 35 minutes. That... I'd never seen a map like that. That might be one of the best maps I've ever seen in Overwatch history. That was so fun to watch. And the way it ended, it was just so anticlimactic. But, like, it was good. In a way, it was a good ending still. The way LA Valiant forced Dallas Fuel to C9. It's not like Dallas Fuel just, oh, oops, we left the cart. They left for a reason, guys. There was a Diva Bomb coming, and there was a Genji Dragon Blade. And they didn't have something like a Trank to tank it. So, just, wow, it was crazy, dude. Junkertown, by far, probably the best map of the tournament so far. Might go down as one of the best maps of the entire tournament. Honestly, I know there's like hundreds and hundreds of games, but that map was insane. It's definitely going to be up there. Next, we went to Horizon Lunar Colony, which was also extremely close. These teams were neck and neck. LA Valiant found themselves with an advantage, but they weren't able to capitalize on it late in the game and ended up drawing out. Soon and Silk Thread looked great. Taimu's Hog looked great once again as well on this map. Coco finally a main tank from Dallas Fuel looked pretty comfortable. He was doing work on the Reinhardt. I like the quad tank setup that Dallas was running. It definitely looked strong. They potentially could have taken this map. The map could have went either way. It was extremely close. But in the end, it ended up in a draw. And then we moved on to Elios. And on this map, it became really noticeable that as the set went on and on, it was moving more into the favor of LA Valiant. First, we started off on Junkertown, and it actually looked like Dallas kind of had the advantage, but it was extremely close. LA came out on top in the end, and then he went to Lunar Horizon Colony, where it sort of looked like it was in LA Valiant's favor throughout most of the map. They slipped up near the end, and they, and they weren't able to capitalize and take the victory, and it ended up in a draw, but it slightly looked in LA Valiant's favor. And then we got to Elios, and the LA Valiant just looked pretty strong. The first map, they 100-0 Dallas Fuel, got to the second round really quick, and it was 99-99, but it wasn't like a 99-99 that was super close. Dallas only won three fights compared to Los Angeles Valiant's six fight wins, and they had almost double their kills. So Elios in general was kind of a free win for LA Valiant. They looked much better. Silk Thread again, wow, he just, he can play anything, dude. From Soldier, Farah, Genji, Tracer, doesn't matter. He can pop off on all these heroes at any time. And he's definitely been proving that he deserves all the playtime he's been getting over players like Agilities and Grim Reality. The Dallas Field just really couldn't contest them on Elios, and it went into the LA Valiant's favor, 2-0. And then moving on to the last map, Nubani, where, yikes, Dallas just looked like a mess. Yeah, Dallas, ugh, it just really looked all over the place. Uh, multiple C9s throughout the set, and then even worse C9s on this map. They couldn't even cap the first point. LA Valiant pushed with, what was it, three minutes left? 342, I think it was. Uh, they had a lot of time left. Again, I just think... Dallas is really off with some of these new players. They don't look like they have synergy. They don't look like they're working well together. They don't seem to be on the same page. And I know I've been preaching it a lot, but it really does look like that. And I, I can't really pinpoint why. 
They just they had a successful system going, and bringing in these new players kind of threw them off. Maybe in the long run they can get their stuff together as more players get used to their new play styles or what they want to do as a team. They just got to get on the same page. If they do, they'll be better. They're still a good team. I'm not trying to take anything away from them. They're a good team. They went neck and neck with Soul Dynasty, barely losing that set. And there were some really close maps in this set too. Yeah, they got stomped on the last two maps, but the first two maps, incredibly close, incredibly close. So it's not like Dallas is a really bad team or anything. They're still top of the middle of the pack rank 5, rank 4, rank 6, but they're not looking like that powerhouse that a lot of you guys expected them to be. And I kind of had a feeling that this was going to happen, and it's going to take some time for them to get back to what they were before. And hopefully they can. I'm not saying they won't. They're definitely a playoff contender, no doubt about that. They're a playoff contender, and if they get their stuff together, by the end of the season, they could be a championship contender again. But based off this week, just too many mistakes. We're playing a game of Overwatch. This meta is totally based off mistakes. The team that makes the most mistakes always is going to lose. Mercy can only bail you out so much. And when the other team also has Mercy, the mistakes, they add up. And when you're just not working well together, it's not going to be good for your team. And once again, like I do in all my videos, let's take a look at the stats from Winston's lab, guys. Uh, Soon's insane. Silk Thread is insane. And then on the side of Envious, you can see that they try to run every single player. The DPS player is kind of holding their own of Taimu, you know, put in work. 59-39, that's really good. Effect, he died a lot, but still, he's getting those kills for his team. And they're just kind of lacking in the other departments. I mean, Mickey, 31-51, and 51, that is not good for a D.Va player. And I, a lot of you guys have been hyping up Mickey in my comment section. With play like that, guys, you know, we can't be putting him on top 10 player lists. He's going to have to step it up. Harry Hook going 27-51, he got some frags in. And if Dallas has anything going for them right now, it's their Junker Town. They have a really strong Junker Town. And a lot of that is due to Harry Hook having insane aim and being able to flex onto that Bastion while running a solo healer. The comp is definitely working well for them. They got something going there. And if they can get stuff like that going on other maps, they'll be in a better position. And then as for Coco, he definitely looked better on the main tank today. It's just, again, like, their player stats aren't that bad. Nobody really performed horribly besides, I'd have to say, Mickey here. I mean, these stats... Those stats are kind of shaky there from Mickey. The, the, as a D.Va player, you should never really be negative. You should always be around the even mark, a little over even. Being that negative, that's kind of a problem because it's really hard to die on D.Va. Considering once you do lose your mech, you basically have another chance to get another life without dying. So that's not good for him. But again, other than that, it's not like anybody has a terrible stat line. Yeah, XQC 13-4, it's not awful. Much better than his performance against Soul Dynasty. It's just they're looking off. They're not playing together. I, and that's it. I mean, I've said it before and I'm not really, there's not really much more to say about it. They just look off. They need to figure their stuff out. They need to take some time, buckle down and figure out what the problems are. And once they do, they'll look a lot better. And that's the video guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And last but not least, join the discord guys. We got a great community going here. We did a viewing party yesterday. A whole bunch of people showed up. It was hilarious. We had a bunch of good conversations. You can basically ask me anything you want on voice. I'll answer. It's just a good time, man. We got a good family going on the discord. So be sure to join. We're going to be doing viewing parties all season. Come root on your favorite teams. And again, thank you for watching guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.